Today is the kind of day that Tesla Good News Friday was named after. <laughs> we have good news from Berlin, from Reno, from the stock market. Um, although Tesla's early momentum died off early, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. At the end of today's episode, we have some strong rumors and also some strong factual information about Semi-Truck. So this is Randy Kirk. You know how to do it now. You hit the like button every single time. This is really important. Hit that like button, unless you hate it, <laughs> or you want to wait till later. And then hit subscribe, hit notify. You want to hit notify because uh, tomorrow we're having, who do you think? We're going to have Larry Goldberg, and he's going to help me with the entire story about uh, you know what we learned from Kathy Wood tonight giving an analysis of her analysis. And that is, I believe, probably the most important show we do every month in terms of really helping me, helping Larry, helping you, hopefully, to understand the markets and to understand where things are going and to, and to, and to be, get some clarity about what's happening in the economy and how that might impact Tesla as well as the stock market. On Sunday morning, we had Scott Walker. He'll be back to talk about the Starlink IPO. And I will leave a card later because earlier today, he did a, a session with me where we talked about Optimus and are we already in production now? I mean, Elon said November. Anyway, I'll put a card up about that later. All right, I don't wanna bury the lead here. Oh, did I forget to mention joining Patreon? Thank you so much for everybody that's doing Patreon. It's such a help. I can't believe we finally hit the 125 number. Yay! <laughs> and so that's good. Now we got to go. We got to get a new uh, a new uh, goal here, but I haven't set one yet. Anyway, um, Elon is in Germany, and he said that the factory looks great and the team is doing a great job. He further stated, and here it is, Berlin will be one of the factories where they're going to make the Gen 3 vehicles. Hey, we're sure glad to have that cleared up. I mean, sure, we might have all thought that was going to happen, but I've had a lot of conversations with some people that have said, well, they're not even going to make uh, Model 3s there because it's uh, so much less expensive to make them in in, uh, in China. So maybe, you know, make them all in China or India. But anyway, no, this has been confirmed now specifically right out of the mouth of Fearless Leader, they're going to make the Gen 3 cars in Berlin. Now, that raises a very interesting question. Where are they going to make the, the cars for Asia and for export into the South Pacific and you know places like Australia, Japan, and South Korea? Where are they going to make the Gen 3 cars for those markets? And, um, you know, are, is there going to be a new factory in, in Shanghai or somewhere in China? Is it going to be the India factory that's been talked about? Well, that would be interesting to know. I'd like to have that one cleared up. All right. Um, Elon also answered a post today from Chuck Wood. I'm sorry, did I say Chuck Wood? I was reminded what, how much wood could a wood Chuck? Yes. So Chuck Cook, he said that regarding how how will U.S. Regulate, regulators decide on whether or not FSD should be a thing? And uh, he says, maybe one way to measure it would be how many autonomous deaths are better than those caused by human deaths. So in other words, if we have uh, one human death, if, if a human causes one death by automobile every million miles, and the robot causes one death, I mean, the, uh, the, the robot taxi creates one human death every 900,000 miles, would that be good enough to say, yeah, we need to do this, this uh, robo taxi thing or this autonomous thing? Um, I would say, quite frankly, with all the other benefits, it could even be even, it could be more. My guess is it will be significantly less. Anyway, Elon's response to that uh, question was that that was the most fundamental question. <laughs> so, I was a little bit surprised to see just how much profit taking already took place on bonds today because the yields moved as low as 4.51, almost down to 4.5. And they might have for a minute. I might have missed it. Um, and then they uh, but they were back up to 4.57 at the close. So that's quite a bit of profit taking. But still, it was down 10 basis points on the day. So it seemed like the traders decided to take some profits on Tesla, too. And it slid from its daytime high of $425.76 down to only a gain of $1.45 or just around 220 per share. In the after hours, 
it was already back up over 221, I think, per share. Yeah, over 221 last time I checked. So this was a slight underperformance for the for the day, but I'm still a huge overperformance of both the index and the MEG7 for the two-day period uh, that we've been going through of this tremendous news from both the Fed and from the labor market uh, and also from the productivity. Now, don't forget productivity. To me, that was the biggest news of all for the three days. Anyway, keep in mind that Tesla has a double whammy up or down regarding this whole interest rate thing. When they, they'll sell more cars if the interest rates go down. So that's gonna be a positive when the interest rates go down. And then they also get a higher PE ratio because people use this discounted cash flow method of determining the value of a stock. And the discounted method is gonna make the stock worth more if the interest rate used to make that computation is lower. So if as that as the interest rates were going down the last couple of days and Tesla shot up, that is a big part of the reason. As they started back up again today after some profit taking started in, um, then people might have been pulling back on Tesla a little bit because of that. There was nothing else that I could find other than there could have been a whale or there could have been some some you know some profit takings just specifically okay we've gone from 207 up to 227 yeah might, might take some profits i also went back and i looked at the charts on tesla to confirm my rather um off the cuff remark this morning that tesla had no real resistance all the way to 300 that's right <laughs> there really isn't 375 there's a resistance there that was my kind of my interim number that I talked about earlier this month that I thought we might make by Halloween. We obviously didn't, but now that everything's in place, you've got all the pieces in place now. You've got the fundamentals are good going forward. You've got, well, we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. You've got the stock market uh, back to being in bull mode and risk on mode. Um, I think, uh, you know, we're going to 300 really soon, and but we might have some a real resistance point at 275. And that doesn't mean there aren't other little minor resistance points along the line, but nothing significant. All right. Um, overall, equities notched sizable gains today as investors grew hopeful that the Federal Reserve rate hiking campaign is over. The Dow is up more than 5% in its best week since October 2022. The S&P 500 was higher by more than 5%, notching its very first 5D advance since June. <laughs> so the S&P has been suffering, and the NASDAQ gained more than 6%. Well, okay, so Gary Black, was uh, he was on uh, the Tesla Bulls today, or what it's called, the Cyber Bulls, I think, uh, uh, program, uh, it's a, it's a Spaces and a YouTube program, I think, simultaneously. Anyway... Gary Black, he's a fund major, manager and a major voice in the Tesla community on X, if you don't know who he is. Anyway, he was on Cyber Bulls today. He's expecting that the, he's, he's very bullish right now, more bullish than he's been recently on Tesla. He believes that the margins, the 16.7% third quarter margins uh, that, that Tesla reported is the low. That's it. They're not going lower. He believes that. He thinks in the street is now expecting 17.4% or a 0.7% gain in margins in the fourth quarter. Another reason to be bullish on Tesla. Um, Gary thinks that uh, if Tesla just holds the line on prices, no more significant price decreases or across the board price decreases, then Tesla will just automatically be seeing increases in margins. Um, uh, uh, did I say increases? I meant you. You know, I meant decreases. If he doesn't, if Tesla doesn't do any price decreases, <laughs> sorry. Um, anyway, I would agree with Gary. Um, I'm not sure whether they'll need. It's, I doubt if they'll need decreases on the three because the new three should be doing very, very well. Um, the thing I would worry about maybe in December could there be a little bit of uh, folks holding off to get that $7,500 applied immediately as opposed to the 7,500 coming back in their taxes later. Although on the other side of the coin, if you buy it in December, you're you're going to get the tax money back in a couple of months anyway. So I don't know how that'll all work out. Anyway, Gary also said that he's going to be putting out a report on Monday. We will make sure we get this report. And if it's anything useful, I will give it to you. 
He is going to show in this report that BEV sales in quarter three were actually improving the opposite of what you're hearing from GM and Volkswagen and Mercedes and Ford and Stellantis. I mean, well, Stellantis actually did pretty well. All Toyota, all these guys talking about, oh, it's over with regard to EVs. Oh my gosh, it's the end of the world. No, he's going to show where the third quarter was actually improving. And I believe he said he's also going to show that it's that the increases going forward are, are extremely likely. We'll be looking really interesting to see, interested to see that report. Meanwhile, we commonly on this channel, we commonly will bring up misleading headlines or articles, and then we'll talk about how they're misleading and why they might be doing what they're doing. But it's rare when we're doing that that we actually see blatant lies or if not lies, something that's so blatantly factually incorrect as to be gross negligence. I mean, just like, duh, this is you got to you had to have known this when you said this. This is what you said. You had to have known this was true. That's gross negligence. So we have CNBC's number one top star stock analyst, Jim Cramer, making the following statements. Maybe you've already heard about this, but I felt I had to report on it. The cyber truck, he says, will debut at $100,000. He has absolutely zero knowledge to base that on. Tesla has ma made no announcement. There's been no solid rumors. There's been no, there's been one tweet that came out a few days ago that was completely denounced by everybody who saw it as being nuts. So it could have been using that because that would be journalistic. Uh, it would be like, go back to journalism school. You need to have two sources. You need to back up the source. So where's he getting the $100,000? So he says, you know, who's going to buy that car for $100,000? Anyway, um, most in the community expect the first price will be $79,000 or the greatest number of people in the community think it'll be 69,420. Anyway, at a minimum on this one, he's making a number up. I think that's horrible analysis. Number two, Kramer also claims that the truck has a lesser payload capacity than a Ford Maverick, a small pickup at 1,500 pounds. But on Tesla's website, it said the Cybertruck's payload capacity is up to 3,500 pounds. So this is either gross negligence for a CNBC expert or it's an intentional lie. One of the two. All right, number three, he says he thinks Tesla will only sell 50,000 units when it's clear, 50,000, 50,000 units. They're only going to sell 50,000 of these. I don't know whether he means a year, 50,000 total, but even if he means a year, but there is at least, and he knows this, there's at least a million reservations. Tesla said that themselves in their third quarter. I've heard plenty of reports that say that the number of reservations is over 2 million. So again, for somebody whose primary job is analysis, to come up with this lame number is beyond what we call on the law a reasonable doubt that he is purposely misinforming his audience. I believe, this is, I'm being honest here, I really mean it. This is sincere. I think CNBC should, I think CNBC should fire him. I think this is either gross negligence are an outright lie, and I think it's absolutely a fireable offense. I can't imagine how anybody would have any credibility, would think that the guy is credible after this. Well, but, you know, and I'd be curious to think, think, what do you think? Do you think he should be fired? Anyway, Elon had a completely different take. He said, um, this is a good omen. Inverse Kramer never fails. <laughs> this is a theory, of course, that anything that, that Kramer says, the opposite takes place. Some of you in the comments have said this about me, and we know that's not true. Anyway, okay, let's see here. <laughs> All right. Um, trueflation dropped to 2.35 today and now has two weeks in a row under 2.5 and almost five months now of right in the range of 2.5. So Scott Walter and I just did an ep episode on Optimus, and this was posted today on by Tesla Bot Journal. That's at Tesla Bot Journal. The title is China's Call to Action for Rapid Deployment of Humanoid Robots. China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology issued a nine-page guideline yesterday. And these are the bullets. 
establish a humanoid robot innovation system, make breakthroughs in key technologies, and ensure supply of core components by 2025. Number two, humanoid robots should become an important new engine of economic growth by 2027. Number three, humanoid robots in the manufacturing sector is a priority. And number four, directed the industry to focus on the brain, cerebellum, and limbs of humanoid robots led by breakthroughs in AI. Interesting. All right. Well, we'll see how they do. Morgan Stanley had a report. They conducted a comparative analysis of the Tesla Semi and existing heavy-duty BEV trucks. The Semi provides, they say, a competitive payload, thereby creating a highly efficient, long-range, fast-charging, software-controlled Class A truck. Quote, this poses a threat to truck OEMs worldwide, comma, I'm sorry, end quote, wrote, Analysts at Morgan Stanley, according to blah, blah, blah. The firm also believes that Volvo is the best protected OEM in the industry, thanks to the development of their electric city buses. They also noticed that Tesla's vertical integration, including battery manufacturing, provides a huge additional advantage. All right, now we have this pure speculation from Zanagler. At Heinrichs Zane who does flyovers from time to time at Giga Nevada. He believes, based on evidence on the ground and talking to people and some inside information he wasn't willing to divulge, those were the three criteria that he comes to this conclusion. He believes they are going to move the warehouse on wheels that's, that's there now to a new pad that is being prepared. And then a standalone building will be constructed where that warehouse on wheels is now. Based on his information, that new building will be used to make the semi in scale. And he believes that semi volume production could be way sooner than most are thinking because putting a tilt up, you know, of that size as a standalone building is a few months process. I know. I, I, I've been in industrial parks for 40 years out of my 50 years of business, and I've watched those tilt-ups go up. You probably have too. Sometimes I think they I think I've seen tilt-ups go in like three months from start to finish, ready to move in. So anyway, that could be very, very exciting news if Tesla is getting ready to build a tilt-up where they will make the semi. Now that may not be it at all, but that is what he's hearing and that the extension of the bigger building is that, that that's been put off maybe for some of the same reasons that they're putting off Mexico. That's again, his speculation. All right. So if you haven't hit, hit like yet, this is the time you do it. If you haven't hit subscribe, you know what to do. You haven't hit subscribe. It's such a help to the channel and hit notify, which is also a help to the channel. Also your comments. Oh man, your comments are great. I love your comments. As you know, I'm still answering almost all of them. Um, but, uh, you know, there come a time and it's certainly, it's getting, uh, sometimes I can't, and there's days when I just cannot. Okay. But I love your comments and they also help the, the channel to grow. Um, and then, um, hitting, uh, um, uh, notify, uh, did I say that already? <laughs> Probably anyway. And then what we want you to do is we want you to join the 125 other folks who are now supporting me on Patreon, supporting the channel on Patreon. This channel can't, I mean, I love doing it and I'm going to do it. Okay. There's no question about me continuing to do it. I will do it if I only make 10 bucks an hour doing it, but it is a 40 It's really seriously a solid 40 hours might be a little bit more that I work on this. Okay. And so I think I should be able to get paid a reasonable, maybe I can't get paid as much as I did when I owned my factory, but I should be paid. Maybe I shouldn't get paid. I can't, get paid as much as I could if I used my law degree and went back and passed the bar at my ripe old age and became a lawyer. But I should at least be getting paid, you know, more than the minimum wage, more than the minimum wage in California. I mean, I am, okay, but but there's a number. I'm shooting for a number and the Patreon thing will help me get there. And, you know, if it's giving you five or $10 a month worth of value, please just shoot up, go down into the description below hit that little uh, uh, URL, you know, link and go on to Patreon, join up and uh, test it out for a few days. I'm going to the trouble every day to also put up several articles each day as there's breaking news. I put up the breaking news and my analysis of it. 
and I throw that up, you know, whenever I hear it. So that might be something that would be useful to you two to five times a day. And then of course I have a deal right now where you get this box, you get this great box. Wouldn't you like to have one of these boxes? I mean, it's a great box. How much better looking can you have a box than this? And then of course, oh, you wanna know what's inside. It, oh, you're guessing. <laughs> oh, it's one of those cyber truck <laughs> bottle openers, magnets, refrigerator magnet. And you've been wanting one. You've been looking at these things now for how long? What have I been selling them for a couple of months now? Sold a lot of them. <laughs> very, very happy with the sales of these. Everybody that is selling uh, merch on their channels would love to have my numbers. <laughs> you guys have done a great job. Thank you so much. And this has been a very, very good week for sales. So it's getting close to Christmas. It's time to put in your order. 25 bucks for one, $45 for two, $65 for three. Somebody bought 90 uh, paid 90. They just guessed that for four, it would be $90. That's fine. If you want to buy four, that's $90. If you want to buy 10, it's 220. So you see, it gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper per unit, the, the more you buy. If you live outside the country, please add 20 bucks for freight. And then uh, of course you get one free if you should join at the $10 level up on Patreon. Um, oh, I, I, know, I should put that card up. In fact, yeah, I'm putting the card up for that earlier show today that I did with uh, with uh, with uh, uh, Scott Walter. You definitely want to go see that. It was really fun on Optimus and whether we might already be in production or if not, we are really getting close. So you want to go take a look at that. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So happy Friday. It was a really good one. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning when it'll be me and... Uh, and uh, Larry Goldberg, as we go through everything that Kathy Wood says later this afternoon, which I'm looking forward to more than usual. Okay. <laughs> it's been great talking to you.